So this is how the invite message looks like from the Wireshark tracing. So if you open the Wireshark application and you try tracing a specific number and you found that this person is sending an invite message to call a specific person, you will find that this is how the trace looks like. All right. So let's quickly indicate here. Okay. So first I send an invite and then it replies with 100 trying. And after that you received, or maybe you guys received 180 ringing and then you receive the 200 okay. So this is, just let me cut it down, the invite message. And I'm showing you how the invite message looks like in the Wireshark as if you are looking at the scenario exactly, all right? And in this invite, if you press double click on invite, all right? So if you guys press double click on invite, you will find below that this is the structure appearing or how the SIP header looks like. And as we said, the invite message is divided into two things. The SIP header, which is the information of the SIP signaling and the SDP body which is the information that describes the traffic or speech traffic and how it looks like. Now, if you look at the SIP header, you will find the first thing is the request line, which defines the message type, which this invite message is, as the function of the invite is to invite another customer for a call, for example, all right? And we also put in the request line, the URI or SIP URI of the person you want to call, which is 311 at coreims.com, which is destination or target user agent that you want to talk to. And in the call, you will use signaling version SIP or SIP version two. As there is SIP version 2, 1.5, and others. As all of these are SIP versions, like anything that has a version, SIP also has versions. Now let's talk about the message header. First thing you see is the VIA or VIA. As it shows the transport protocol, we will use, which is the, <coughs> sorry for that, <coughs> which is the UDP. And as we said, I am in the SIP invite message. I have two things, SIP header, which describes SIP signaling, and SDP body, which describes how your traffic looks like. But who transfers the traffic itself? Here it says UDP, as we will use the UDP protocol to transfer the traffic media or speech traffic itself. So in VIA, it states that the method of transporting or what transport protocol that you will use in the traffic. It will state that you are using SIP version two. All right. And it will state that the traffic itself, we want to uh, come to or reach or, uh, or this IP address, which is 192. Point one six eight point one point triple one. All right. And the port is, as you can see here, three seven seven five six. All right. Let's also write this down. So again, three one one. at core IMS is the target user agent URI. 
and SIP one, SIP two point zero is the version that we use. Right. So is the SIP. So this is the SIP. All right, and we said VIA shows you the transport protocol and UDP is the transport protocol. All right, so let's put that here. So UDP is the transport protocol. Okay. So, you will use the UDP to transfer media speech traffic and IP address that I will receive my traffic on is 192.168.1.111 and the port is 37756. All right. Now here, I have something called a branch, which is the identifier of this transaction or the ID of this transaction, all right? Then I have from, which it means who sent this request or who sent this invite, which is me, Amir. And his SIP URI, which is, as you can guys can see here, Amir at 10.1.1.1 with the port of 30074. As here, I put the contact address, but here I introduced myself as sending the invite message. So let's put this part. So from, so from here is the caller sit your okay. Then I have two which is 311 at coreims.com, which is the target user agent that I want to reach or call. So let's put that here as well. So this is the target user agents, right? Then I have caller ID, which is the ID of dialogue. As you remember, when we said before the dialogue, from me sending the invite message till I send by to terminate the session. Now this is a, all a dialogue and this dialogue has an ID or identifier. So this ID is the dialogue ID as well. Okay, then we have something called the C sequence, which means that the sequence number of this ID is number two. But some people will ask, where's number one? You may say that, for example, number one, the client sent an invite for the first time and the invite got rejected because, for example, the server wanted this person to authenticate first before sending the invite. As you want to make a call, without authenticating to see if you are first allowed to access or not. So here the C sequence says that this is the second invite. Then we have contact, all right? So here I send the invite, but I state if you want to get back to me, you can get back to me at this address, which is Amir at 10.1.1.1 which is the contact of the call, which shows his location. So again, this is the caller contact. Right. So this is the caller. 
Then I have another parameter called allow. Now, if you remember, we said allow sees all the methods that supports it. So this user, does he support the invite message? Does he support cancel, options, buy, refer, notify, message, subscribe, info? All of this, all of these are options that he can support. So let's put that here as the support options. Then we have maximum forwards, as you guys can see here, 70. So maximum forwards, which indicates the maximum number of forwards for the request, which means that I can send this message and can pass to a couple of network nodes, like passing to proxy or location, and then go to other places. But my maximum is how many nodes here? Here I can say my maximum is 70. Then we have the content type, which means that I use the SIP application and I will describe my content type like the SDP party. So I will describe my traffic stream or my media traffic with SDP, which is session description protocol. Then I have proxy authorization. As in this parameter, I create credentials I need to access the proxy server. Didn't we say that when the invite comes from the user agent, it has to go to a proxy first. And how will I access this proxy server? I put the credentials. So when the proxy asks, I could access the proxy itself or pass from the proxy. Then you guys have here the user agent. It tells the type of user agent that is sending. So who is sending? It's Amir, but Amir has a user agent. What is he, as a user agent, what is he using? He's using something called Bria3. And it is a software application available on a laptop, for example, or your desktop. Now, the last thing is the content length, which states the length of SDP body, which is 380 bytes, which is not a big deal or a problem. So, Let's put here, which was the SDP. SDP. Okay. So this is the invite message. And we talk here about the header of the invite message. And of course, we will still talk about the SDP body of the invite message. But let's talk first about the 200 OK response. Let's just erase this so we can go through the slide. Right. Right. So now let's talk about the 200 OK response. So here we took a request, as you guys can see which is the invite. Now let's talk about the first response and the most important one, which is 200 OK. First thing is the status line, which indicates the type of response, which is 200 OK, all right? And also it states that I'm using SIP version two. Now let's go down here. So again, the 200 OK is the type of response. Response. And SIP 2.0 is the SIP version 2. Now let's see the via. Via is adjusted with SIP 
And what does adjust here mean? I have to do adjust in the via, so, or I have to adjust the via in the response. So the response can reach the other, the other user agent that I'm replying or who sent the request and who adjusts it, it is the server. So if it's a proxy, it adjusts it, all right? And in the via, we will find that a road is put so we can reach this user or the user agent, which is the IP address and port. So I can reach the user agent on, which is 193.166.2.121. And also I will say that speech traffic will be on the UDP port and SIP version two as well. Then I have from, which means the user agent that did initiation for the invite message, which is Amir. Then I have two is to where the invite is going to or which user agent, which is 311 at coreims.com. And then I have the C sequence, which will also be two. And then I have the allow message, which also supports the invite, acknowledge, cancel, options, buy, refer, notify, and all the others. And as all these are the uh, options. And then we have the contact type, which is the um, application SDP. And then the call ID, you will find it in the same call ID of the invite as this is the call ID of my dialog as you will find the two uh, constant. All right, um, how about contact? As I will tell him, if you want to reach me, you'll reach me on this contact address of this proxy server. And here the user agent uh, or destination is the asterisk PBX which is something like a call center, for example. Then I have the contact length, which is the SDP body, which is uh, 335 bytes. Then there is something called the uh, record route, uh, as you can see up here, which is inserted by the proxy to allow the future requests to go to this proxy, right? So any future requests will go through this proxy. All right. so. This is the 200 okay message.